Hello everyone, this is Ari from Panda Killer. So in previous session, we have uh, used the system timer. So we have came through the concept of system timer, which is system. So we have used the polling method for polling method for creating a delay using the system timer. So what today we are going to do is we are going to use the interrupt handler for system timer. So the microcontroller will have a default system handler, the uh, interrupt handler for uh, system timer. So we are going to use this thing. So in uh, wait a second. So in previous session, I have explained that you that the, when this uh, system timer uh, reaches the interrupt point, then the interrupt is generated, then it will comes to the system handler interrupt settings. So we can write some code inside this. So that will get executed. So today we are going to use do this thing only. Okay. So first we will complete this and we will next we will get into the next we will get into the internals. So we are getting into the interrupts of concepts. Okay. So it is it will be a uh, main important concepts and the uh, main important future guys. So listen to the class listen to this class. Okay. So it will be first we will create a code for uh, system thing using the interrupt function, interrupt handler, okay. So first I will create a new project. In this system interrupt. So we are going to use the interrupt, okay. So first we have to select the package, right? So we will select the PG. Okay, this is the discovery board which is I'm using. Okay. So now we have to give the system system uh, simpson score and go to the device and give the startup file. Okay. Then we will add the dot C file. So first thing we have to do is we have to add the so now we will develop the code for the system tick. Okay. So so what is the first thing we are going to do is we are going to initialize the system. Tick. Okay. So first we will create a void of, we are going to create a millisecond delay, okay. So we are going to use the, use the interrupt for creating a millisecond delay, okay. So first we will initialize the system tick to create a system tick in it. So this is a function first we are going to create, then we will create a Void of delay of it will be in the microseconds, right? So we will do it as in top sixteen. Okay, unsigned in top sixteen, which is a uh, value is third to bit. So length is third to bit. Okay, so the integer value we are giving is it is in the third to bit. Okay, so so this is the another function we are going to create. Okay. So these are the two things we are going to do. So first we will create a system tick init function. Okay. So in system tick init function, as I uh, already explained yesterday. So today we will just uh, implement those uh, registers. Okay. So system tick in this first we have to set the control register. We have to reset the control register first. Then we have to load the value, right? So, so we have to go the reload value. System tick off.
load. So you have to say the value here. So I'm going to type cast here. So Sixteen. So I'm going to create a microsecond. So I have to give the sixteen thousand minus one. Okay. So next is. So we uh, didn't want to. We have to. We didn't want to enable the interrupt because the system time all this comes under the vector interrupts, which will be defaultly available. Which will be de by default it will be enabled. So we will we will come to those uh, things later. First we will configure this. Okay. So but we have to. Set the priority. Okay. So for setting the priority, we will we will go set priority. So go to the N V I C which is nested a uh, vector interrupt acutes. So in that we have a set priority. In this we have to view the system system tick. I or Q. Yeah. So this will enable my. This will say my. I am going to configure the system tick inter. So I have to say the priority. Okay. So what is the priority? So I am going to give it as a one. Okay. So I will give it as a one. So now we have set the priority. We didn't want to enable it because uh, it will be default. It will be en enabled by default by the microcontroller. Okay, so these are some uh, some interrupts will come under the vector interrupts. It will be enabled in default. Okay, so next is we have to set the value. So we have to set the value. So we will set this. Okay. Hello. So value of next is we have set the value as zero. Next we have to. We are going to enable this as this. So we are going to tune on this counter, and we are going to enable this interrupt. Then we are going to enable the clock source as well. We are going to use the system clock source, which is 16 megahertz. So then, what is the value I have to set? I have to set logic one in the second, one and zero. So what is the sum of this value? One, two, four. So what is four plus two, six? Six plus one, seven. So I am going to simply send the seven to the control register. So this will set my Three states, which is a uh, control, which will enable the counter as well as counter as well as processor. It will set my processors, then enables the inter. So I will shoot to the zero. So now we have finished finished the initiate system tick initiate function. Next we are going to create this delay function. Okay. So what is next? We are to do is we are to create delay. Okay. So Now what we have to do is so before that we are we are going to declare a variable which will be a static. What is the static means? Uh, by giving the static, the variable we are declaring the variable static means it can be accessible by the whole throughout the program. So it is declared in the global variable. So the variable can be accessed or modified throughout the program. Okay. So that is why I am. Using static and volatile keyword, so it can be volatile. So we will do volatile, and I am going to unt off. I am going to unsign off int of thirty two bit. Okay. So next, I will make this as now my tick. Okay. My ticks. So I am initializing as at zero. Okay. So what is the delay? First, we are going to create this. We are going to create my tick. My tick is equal to zero. So I am I am first initializing the tick to zero. Then I am going to check it with this. My tick is or equal to of M S. So I am going to give a value. If I give a thousand means, it is going to it is going to check with me check with my ticks. So it have to 
get the thousand ticks. So how it will get the thousand ticks? So as I explained in the previous class, when it reaches the zero from uh, when it reaches the value from the top, it's going to down count it. So if the value reaches from the reload value to zero, when it reaches uh, when it does the transition from one to zero, it is going to give an interrupt, right? So it is going to get into the interrupt angle. So by that. So it is going to get into the interrupt handler. So when is what is the time interval for getting every ticks? So for getting every interrupts. So the time interval is we configure as a sixteen thousand minus one. It is the microsecond. So there will be every micro. It will uh, time duration between the reload value to zero is is what is the time period? Is? It is microsecond, one microsecond. So it will take one microsecond to down count from reload value to zero. When it comes, it, when it reaches zero, it is going to generate an interrupt. So, what is the thing it is going to happen now? It is going to generate an interrupt in the time interval of every one microsecond. So, I am going to give a ten thousand microseconds. So, I have to wait till this tickers get a incremental into a thousand. So, for every micro, every ticks, it going for every interrupt, it is going to add the tick. So, it will comes to it will come wait. This oil will run till the wait till this tickers becomes a thousand. So when it uh, exceeds a thousand, it is going to come out of this loop. So it is going to come out of this loop. So this is how we will create a system tick using this delay function. So what is the thing we have to notice here is we have to uh, increment the tick value, right? So we have to increment the tick every one microsecond, every whenever the interrupt is generated. So, as I explained in the previous class, uh, we have a default interrupt handler for system tick. So, you can now uh, wait, I will show it. So, go to the starter files, you can see we have a vector. So, it is comes under the internal interrupts. So, these are the inter internal interrupts which will be which will be enabled by default. Then when it comes with uh, this means you can see we have an uh, these all comes under the external interrupts. So we have to enable this interrupts. Okay. So your scroll down means uh, wait, I will zoom. So you can see it right. So when you scroll down means in startup file, we have an uh, C. So we have an uh, vector interrupts, which is a in, uh, internal interrupts. So they have mentioned it as an a week. What is this uh, keyword de uh, define as? It is in a, it is not in a handling stage, so it is in a weak stage. We can uh, make it strong by redefining it this handler in the main program. Okay, so this will make this strong and it will it will get into the interrupt handler and do some process of what we are giving in those hopes. Okay, so these are the internal interrupts and we have a external interrupts. You can see here. Right? So we have uh, used the in a previous session we have used the DMA interrupt, right? So for receiving, for receiving, we have used the DMA interrupt. So you can see here we have a DMA. This is DMA two. So we have used this uh, DMA two interrupt, right? So we have redefined it to make it strong, and we have do, done some process inside this interrupt handler. So now, so you can go to the startup and just make this copy. So you have to use this same word. Okay. So make this copy and create a void of. So we are going to make it strong, redefine it. Okay. So why? Okay, now we have redefined it and we have made the interrupt strong. Okay. Okay. Next, what we are we have to do inside this? So for every one microsecond or for every down count from our reload value to zero, from transition from one to zero, it is going to give an interrupt. So that interrupt when the interrupt is generated, it is going to call this loop only. So this is a loop. It is going to be called when this interrupt is generated. This uh, microcontroller will automatically gets uh, stops all the stops all the system process, uh, stop all these things, and it will uh, it will just uh, jumps to the jumps to this interrupt and so it will not uh, see whatever thing is going on. So as per the priority and the request, it will defaultly jumps into this jump jump into this interrupt handler. By exiting this main loop, so it is going to do some process inside this, and again it is going to coming. It is again going to read the, going to come back to the this main function and going to do some operation as per this main functions. Okay, 
So this how it uh, jumps and how it again comes. We will uh, see in the uh, coming slides. So first we will we will understand the concept that when this interface generator it is going to the microcontroller is going to defaultly going to get into a interrupt analog loop and it is going to do some process in this analog loop and it is going to again going to the main track. Okay. So what is the process we have to do instead? So I have said for every interrupt it's for every interrupt it is going to be one microsecond. So I need a thousand microseconds. That means I need a thousand ticks here. So for every one microsecond I going to for every one every interrupt I am going to I have to increment this my tick right. So I will increment this. So this will get incremented for every right, I will redefine it. So by redefining it it will be okay. So by every interrupt, it will get into the, get into this uh, loop from exiting from this main loop and get into this loop and adds uh, my tick value. So what is my initial tick value? Is it is zero. So it will add for, as per the every ticks for every one microsecond. It is going to add the tick value. So then it will continuously adds a value here and it is going to wait till this tick is uh, changed into thousand. Then it will come out of the loop. So this is all the process. Okay. So now we have created the delays, okay, microsecond delay using the system tick. Now we will create a int of main function, okay. So what is the process we have? So this is good. What's the first thing we have to do is, first thing is we have to in the system, we have to call the system tick in it, okay. So I will have it, the system tick in it. So we have called it. First, we have to call this system tick init function. Then, then we have to include the GPIO part, right? So yesterday we have developed the GPIO function. Just I will make a copy of it, okay? So okay. So now we have to add this GPIO. So we have to call this GPIO. GPIO. So now we have call this function okay so what is the next thing we have to do is we will create a while of one and we will make the copy of this yesterday's code okay so for tuning on and tuning on okay so i'm going to this for uh, tuning on and i am going to set logic one in the logic one in the corresponding bits to tune it off okay So now we have to add some delay here, right? So we are going to add some delay in microseconds. So I will mention it as an DMS. So DMS of thousand microseconds, which is equal to one second. Okay. So next I am going to tune the LED on for one second and I am going to make it uh, tuned off for Seconds. Okay, so so now we have completed this code. Okay, we will compile this, and we have no errors. Now we will upload this code. Before that, we have to select the. So guys, I will before importing, I we will I will again re-explain it. So you can see this is for GPIO. So we have uh, reset the control register first, and we have given this. We have loaded the value for microseconds. Okay. So system clock divided by so system clock is uh, going to divide by we need a microsecond, right? So for that purpose, we have we will give a we need a tick clock of one kilohertz. So we will divide this value by one kilohertz by 16 uh, 16 megahertz divided by one kilohertz. Okay, so this will give me time time period of one microseconds. Then I am enabling uh, I am uh, we do not want to enable the interrupt, we just we want to set the priority. So I we have set the priority for the interrupt. Then we I have set to the value. Then I have enabled the enable the three things, which is uh, I have enabled the counter. I have set to the use the processor clock. Then I have enabled the interruptors. Then we have created a delay millisecond function, which we have initialized the tick is equal to zero. We have initialized the globally that my tick as a static variable as zero. So what is starting means it is going to be accessible for this entire program. Okay. So then we are going to check it with this tick. So every one microsecond, the tick is going to be get added. So for every down count from uh, 
reload value to zero. When it reaches zero, it is going to generate an interrupt and it is going to get into the exit from the main loop, exit from this uh, main program and get into this interrupt handler. So by getting into this interrupt handler, it will add do some operations which is inside this loop. So I have adding my ticks. So it is going to add my ticks every one microsecond. So when this uh, tick reaches the thousand, then we will exit this loop. Okay. So this is how. So before importing, we have to select the debugger. Okay, I will select this as an HTML debugger. Okay. So now we will build this and we'll upload this code. So now we have right. Now we have upload this code. Okay. So now I will show you the output. Okay. So now we have upload the code. So what is the process we have to see? We have to see yes. We have to tune on the LED. LED, LED must be tuned on for one second and LED must be tuned off for tuned off for three seconds. Okay. So LED is tuned off for one second and then it is getting tuned off for three seconds. So you can notice this. So you can see the output. <coughs> So this is how we will create a system timer. Okay. So now we will enter into a enter into get back to the. So this is how we will use the system timers. Okay. So we have used the system handler. So now we are we have used the interrupt handler side. Right? So now we are going to get into the interrupt concepts. So what is interrupt? What are the things we can do with interrupt? How this uh, interrupt parameters are working, and how is the background process? How the background process is going to be? So interrupt is a main concept in the microcontrollers. So why I will say why it is uh, much important. So why you have to concentrate on this uh, topic? So we will see. Okay. So first we have to know what is interrupt. So what is interrupt? Interrupt is a method of creating a temporary halt during a program execution. So while uh, we are creating a system tick uh, program, what is it is doing? It is a uh, it is uh, executing my main program. When this uh, interrupt is generated, it is uh, exiting of the halting the main program and executing the peripheral device to access the main control. So it is getting into the handler by halting the main program and do some operations. What is inside the handler and again gets into the main program. So this is the process of interrupt. So the micro, what is the process doing is the microcontroller response to the interrupt with the what is the ISR? What is ISR means interrupt service routine. So what is the interrupt service routine means? Which is a short program to instruct the microcontroller microprocessor on how to handle the interrupt. So what is this is? This is what we have created. So you can see it, right? Right. So you can see it, right? So this is the thing. So it is handling this operation. Okay. So this is what the line expands. So it is what is this is the ISR routine. Okay, this is what is ISR routine, interrupt service routine. So it is going to get into this and do some operation and coming out of it. It is what is ISR. Routine. Okay. So so now we will see what we will detailedly see what is the difference between interrupt and why we are preferring an interrupt and why it is more important. So we will see the example. Okay. So now we have a two methods. Okay, so for two methods for doing the same operation. Okay, one is polling. So in uh, yesterday's class, uh, we have used the uh, count flag, right? So we have used the count flag to do some delay. So to uh, get some microsecond delay, right? So that method is called as a uh, polling. So what is the polling? Is you will pick up the phone every few seconds and check whether the you are you are getting a call or not. So you are going to take a phone and you are going to check every time. You are going to get a call or not. So that is what this uh, polling is. When it comes to the interrupt means you can do whatever you want. When this interrupt is generated, the interrupt will do some operation. What is the operation is going to do this? It is going to make a sound like a ring sound. It is going to do some ring sound. So by hearing that ring sound, you can take the pick up the phone. You know you don't need to do the you don't need to pick up the phone all the time. It is not the exact thing. It is a good example for it. So now I will give the example for with the code. Okay. 
So now I am going to use the push button. So I am going to use the push button, and when this push button is uh, clicked, the logic one is going to do some pin, and I am going to read those pins. And if the pin is a logic one, then I have to tune on the pin. This is the process. So this is the thing I have to do. Okay. So I can do this in different two ways. One is in coding method, and another one is interrupt method. What this coding method is do is this will read the input button. So we it will read the input button. So which will be connected to the push button. Okay. So it will read the input button all the times. Like we are checking the phone all the times. So it will check all the times when this uh, button is pushed. The logic one will be given to this uh, button pin input. Then it will exit this and tune on the LED. Like this, but why we are choosing the interrupt and why it is important means because see, so we are continuously the microcontroller is doing some process continuously. It is reading something continuously. When it comes to the interrupt, interrupt is completely handled by LVIC separate module inside the IC. Enough. So what this will do is it will not continuously read. Okay. So interrupt will handle like uh, now we have used now tick plus plus. So what if I uh, configure the external interrupt means when I give the push button. Then the push button will give us a logic one. When the logic one uh, is uh, read by the uh, when the logic one is generated, the system will force the controller to uh, microcontroller will force the program to get into a exit all to the main program and gets into the inter panel. So in this inter panel, what is the thing I have given? I have just given is tune on the LED. Then it will tune on the LED and exit. So what is the best best benefit here? You are uh, what is the benefit here? Here you can see it. So what is the main main benefit is we don't need to read the micro. We don't need to make the microcontroller to do some process continuously. We don't need to make the controller to read it continuously. It is a sum of the process. It is sum of the operation we are doing. So by using interrupt, the microcontroller can be in a idle state. When this interrupt is generated, then it will get into it will force uh, NVC by using NVIC. It will force to get into the interpreter and do some operation. Okay, so this is why we are the interpreter is a main concept. Okay. okay, so what is the benefit is? You can see we don't we can eliminate the for this process. So by eliminating this process, we can uh, reduce the uh, we can increase the efficiency. We can uh, reduce the uh, power usage and we can do lots of things. So this way we are getting it right. Okay. So, so before seeing uh, what is next, so you can now convert this uh, master pass into an uh, internship, guys. So, what is the benefit of it? What are the benefits you are going to get? So, in internship, the lots of topics going to be added, and uh, lots of things is coming on our pipelines. So, we are going to see lots of uh, DCA, which is DAC used for uh, useful like uh, audio simulations, lots of things, and uh, you are going to see the CAN, the CAN protocols, LIN protocols, lots of things is added in the pipeline. So. Register for this internship class, guys. So it will be very much useful for you, for you. So to become a good embedded system engineer. Okay. So these are the concepts you have to know to become an embedded system engineer. Okay. So it will be very much useful. So the fees is thousand two hundred. So you don't have to pay the thousand two hundred whole amount. So you can use this coupon code of ESMC one, which you will get a discount of five hundred nine. So the final internship fees will be you have to pay only six ninety one one. Okay. So by paying this, what are the benefits you are going to get? So what is the help of it? So we are uh, seeing lots of new concepts, right? So we are seeing lots of concepts, and we are going to see lots of capture, compare, and core concepts, and lots of communication concepts. We are going to see, and finally we are going to develop a project based on those things. So when you are trying, when you are practicing, and we are developing lots of code in the live stream, right? So when you are trying, trying it or practicing it. You have to when you you will get some at some point you will get some bugs or errors something you go, will miss it so you for that purpose you can for uh, that situation you can use my videos as a reference so use this uh, thirty days videos as a reference for developing code and practicing those things which I have teached so the practicing will make the make you more logically think so you, it will makes your brain very very much thinking logically okay. So you will get this 30 days of videos, recorded videos, which will be accessible for 90 days. So you can use this. Uh, you can use my videos as a reference for 90 days. So you can practice all those things and you can try it on yourself. And lots of hands-on practice on number projects is going to be done in this uh, sessions. 
so when you you are when you replic replicating it and when you are implementing and experimenting with those uh, projects so you will you have to do we you should have some reference right so for that purpose you will it will be very much useful and we are going to do some lots of project in the internship okay then you will get a 30 days of this presentation so i am giving a daily presentation right so you will get a 30 days of presentation not only the presentation the presentations are downloadable and uh, downloadable includes also what are things we are using so we are using lots of things uh, for creating a program right we are using a uh, data sheet programming manual referral manual and lots of things are we are using going through it so all the things will be provided in this downloadable for 30 days downloadable folder will be available for the internship students exclusively okay then also the course i am developing so i am developing the course lots of codes right in the session so those codes files docs files also will be given to the special exclusively available for the internship users only okay so use this and what is the main advantage you will get it so you will the main advantage is you will get a six six mentor live mastermind sessions so what is the mean of meaning of it is we will get a one to one live with myself so you can interact with me and you can ask the doubts related to the concepts which i have teach you from the day one to till the day or you can ask the concepts based on the import systems out of the topic or out of the class what are the doubts are related to the ember projects or uh, you are developing ember project means you can ask doubt related to those projects also so out of the content also you can ask the questions but it should be related to the ember systems okay so these are already two classes over so every saturday we will have a one to one live sessions so uh, batch 3 is start from this monday so guys uh, register this uh, and attend the saturday class and make use of it so four class only is left so use those things guys and after registration registration complete after uh, registration you will get an internship confirmation letter so after that we will provide you a two e certificates which will be very much useful for you uh, for mentioning it in a resume okay so it will be on a two e certificates one is for participation and another one is for course completion so what is the main benefit of this is so what is the main benefit of this certificate is we are learning the stm in a register level right we are not using a advanced library like or or a system programming language like that we are not using we are just using a register level so it was a it is a certificate as a more values okay so that is the why reason so it will be very much uh, useful for you guys okay so how to register so the fees is 1200 so don't be afraid it is not a 1200 you can use the csmc1 by using this you will get a discount of 509 and you will get a discount fees of 691 by you, you have to pay only 691 so you can see the link uh, this is the registration link for those uh, internship classes so you can join us a uh, internship user so this uh, link is provided in the chat box you can uh, see it guys so don't waste the time or miss the time miss the chance so click now right now and join the internship and upskill yourself and uh, you even in the internship if uh, as a internship user if you join the internship means even uh, in the monster mind classes you can ask me some of the topics to teach you so if you uh, ask about the some specific topics means i will uh, make this uh, make those topics as an uh, session in the next class or uh, next week so i will uh, create a session for one hour of uh, session for that and i will be raising it in a internship and as well as in the we will uh, make it releasing in the internship and as well as in the lms and we will uh, we will make it available in the live also i will try it so guys so you can use this internship like this so if you have if you want to know about some specific concept like uh, the topics which is not included in this agenda so that day is our agenda so then you can ask me uh, give me those topics and i will create a good understand i will get a first i will get a good understanding on this on those topics and i will create a good presentation and we will implement those concepts in the kyle code and we will see it out so this is a, like this you can use this internship in many ways okay so guys don't miss this opportunity so you use this registration link for Registering for register now and the link is available in the chat box. So register now and upskill yourself and do use this option. Okay. So next we will get into the class. So what is the next thing we are going to see is so we will see that how the data memory. So how is the memory mapping of this uh, is uh, working? Okay. So in a M4 microcontroller, we will have a data memory in this segment only. So first is code where will be our uh, code data everything will be stored and next is SRAM where our initial values initial data values everything will be stored and uh, we will have a stack and heap that 
we will see what is stack and heap in the next slide. Then we have a peripheral data so where we are we will be having a HB bus values, peripherals are AHB, ABB1 bus like this sort of things. Okay. Then external devices and external RAM, which can be external and the system, which uh, in the system only we will have an uh, NVIC navig, nested interrupts. Everything will be in the system timer, so all will be inside this system. Okay. So First, I will explain this S. Okay, what is this system consist of? Is it will have an initialized uh, initial data, what we are initializing in the program. So it will have an initial data and zero initialized data. Then we will have an heap and stack. So what is this heap and stack? So we will know it. Okay. So now you will see what is stack. So stack means you can see this uh, diagram. So it is uh, it is considered this as a data. Okay. So if I am sending, I am sending a two data. So okay, first I am sending a data one year, then I am also sending a data two year. Now I have to take uh, take the data. Now I have to read the data. So how the stack is workers? So now I have sent the first data and second data. So the second data is on the second uh, first data. Second data is uh, on the top of the first data. So I am reading it when it uh, using a stack. It will reach the second data only first it will reach the first star it will reach the data as a first star so second data it will reach the second data only but first then only it reach the first data because it is a last in first out concept so what is the last data it is get, getting into a stack it is get it is will be the first output for this thing so so it is a stack is a linear data structure this is a collection of same data types okay so it is going to read in Last thing, first up. This is what is stack is. Okay, so I will detail and explain what is uh, stack and how it is. Uh, so this is the good ex explanation for stack. Now we will see it in how it works in microcontroller. Before that, we will see what is heap. So heap is an uh, area of a pre-reserved computer main storage. Uh, it is going to be memory, so that the program process can use to store the data in some variables. So heap is where we are going to store the Processed memory. If I am giving, I am uh, reading a temperature survey, I am going to store the temperature survey in this heap only. So, very well, that won't be known until this program is running. Okay. So, that is what heap is. So, heap is used for dynamic memory allocation. What is dynamic memory allocation? At the allocation of data at the runtime. What is dynamic uh, memory allocation means? You can allocate the data into a memory directly at the run uh, at the runtime without the help of the control. So, this is what dynamic memory allocation is. So at the runtime itself, you can allocate the memory, you can store the memory, uh, so you can store the data in the memory. So that is what dynamic memory is. So and you can store the dynamic memory directly without the help of the controller. Okay, microcontroller. Okay. So that is what heap is. So heap is space used for dynamic memory allocation of data at the runtime. So here the values are going to be stored, which is uh, we are using, uh, we are storing it in a dynamic memory in a runtime. Okay. So this is what heap is. Okay. So you can see, so, so data will be coming to this and it will be the, these are the stacks and here the process will be going on. Okay. So next is, next we will see what is inside this code. So inside this code only we will have an interpreter table. So we will see next uh, what is interpreter table and we will have an all installation functions and we have a interrupts and what is the, uh, this text session means this will have a binary mission instructions. So binary mission instructions like MOV, like uh, you would see now while debugging, we can see the words like. So that is what a binary mission instruction. Then our more data section is read only data sections. So this defines the value of the variables that cannot be changed at the running time. So we can't change at the running time. So that is uh, things uh, which will be defined in the saw read only. And the read and write, which is used to set the initial value or a it is a modifiable variables are stored in this place only. Okay. So this is a S. Next, this is a memory mapping. So you can see we have an this is M4 memory mapping, which is a specific for VG F407. Okay. So we have an port, we have an SRAM, peripheral, external memory device, and this. You can see <coughs> in peripherals, we have an oh, wait, I'm zooming. So you can see it in the peripheral block. We will have an AHP bus two, AHP bus one, APB two, APB one. All these things. When it comes with the uh, SRAM means in SRAM you can see we have an. So what is the SRAM means? It is a on chip RAM. So it is uh, used for heap, uh, heap and stack and codes. Okay. 
So you can see the stuff and we have a code block. Inside this only we will have a program code and data and uh, on chip flash. Okay, for program codes and data. Okay. So next is uh, we have seen peripheral, we have all the buses and uh, we will have an uh, external uh, we will have an external devices which is uh, comes under the external devices means which includes the which includes the SD cards. So that is the external uh, devices. And when this comes with external RAM means it is a off chip uh, memory of data. So it can be up to maximize value of uh, right, 1 GB. Okay. So then system vector specification. So in this system vector specification only we will have an uh, embedding system take care uh, system blocks vectors, vendors, memory allocation, and the large data box. All these things will be in the this vector specific memory. Okay. Okay. So now we will so now we will get into the intra vector table. Okay. So before this before this, we have a Pantech uh, join our team, guys. Want to make a career as an uh, Ember engineer or a Python programmer or a Java programmer or a data science or artificial intelligence or a EV engineer. So these are the things we have. Now the Pantech union is providing a hundred percent of placement, guys. So we are going to recruit some uh, taking the peoples from uh, so guys who are interested in these uh, all the domains. So guys uh, interested to the, these uh, Ember or Python or a Java or data science or artificial intelligence or electric vehicle engineering so we are regulated we are taking the people's as per this uh as per this uh degrees so as per not degree as per this uh, qualification so the guys who are interested in uh, to become a member engineer like this thing so we are uh, focusing on those uh peoples and we are taking in uh, taking in them as an uh, training persons we will train them for uh train, train them related to the what they need if i if i will consider take a scenario they want a student want to become a member engineer okay so we will take the student inside our uh, working community and we will give them a training and we will we will uh, the training will be focused on the what are the requirements in the embedded engineer uh, industries we will uh, check the all the industries all the embedded engineer industries what are the requirements they are asking so what are the technologies they are uh, asking uh, what the students want to know about so what are the technologies that uh, the embedded lots of embedded companies like robot bosch like uh, Jasmine technology is like that. From A to Z, we will analyze all the companies and we will analyze the what are the technologies they are asking. Um, they are uh, asking from the students. What are they seeing the technology that students have to know? So that technology we will take it in a category and we will teach the teach the student with those technologies and we will make them to we will uh, we will arrange the interviews for them and we will train them to how to prepare for interview and we will uh, teach them all the concepts and basic concepts and uh, till zero to beginner to advance and we will teach them completely and we will provide you a placement so the placement is 100 percentage so the people uh, who are learning uh, to this uh, particular domains whatever it can be so we will train those people as per the particular category and we will place them in the if it is uh, student is learning ember means we will place it in a ember domain when it comes with python or java means it is as per the Java and Python domains. So guys, so you can uh, enroll for this uh, job plus placements. So training plus placements. So this is the QR code guys. You can scan this. I will leave it for two seconds. So use this uh, QR code to scan this and uh, register for enroll now. So by enrolling this, you can join our team and improve upskill yourself and you can get placed in the dream, dream industry, which is you like to work and what is the domain you like to work. Okay. So this is the thing. So we will okay. So we will get into the concept. So we will see what is vector table and we will end this session and we will continue on tomorrow's class. Okay. So we will see what is vector table. So as I explained you. In this, uh, so in this, we have seen the vector table. Now we will see what is vector table. Okay. So you can see our controller will be like this one. So we will have a processor which is, will be M4, and the M4 will be 
delicately connected to the NVIC, which is a nested vector intercontroller. So it will be uh, an intercontroller will be connected to the lots of interrupts uh, and we will it will be connected to the lots of uh, external interrupts. So interrupt means we will have lots of uh, user interrupt, DMA interrupt, uh, system tick interrupt like this. We will have also have an uh, external interrupts. So we will have an uh, basically minimum to four to five external interrupts. Okay. So what is this external interrupt means? If I, I can uh, configure, I can configure external interrupt. Okay. Like uh, the system timer is giving a generating interrupt and getting into an interrupt system tick handler. Interrupt handler like that, I can design my own interrupt handler by using the external interrupt. Okay. So, what is this process is going to be? Now you can see the processor is connected to the NVIC. Okay. So the interrupt vector table will contain this all the interrupts. What are these means? Uh, right, I will get into the code. So you can uh, right. So you can see we have lots of interrupts here, right? So these all interrupts will be in the vector table. It will be inside the vector table only. Okay. So these are the things are so we can create a external interrupt. So the those interrupts, all the interrupts I have shown in now you in the startup file, all will be get stored in this interrupt vector table only. So one thing uh, that is going to do is when I give an interrupt, it is going to give to the give that uh, logic to this NVIC. So it is going to NVIC. Then when this NVIC understand the there is an interrupt, then it will send the command to the controller that I am going to alter the program and I am going to get into this interrupt. So then it will call the interrupt from the interrupt vector table and it will do some interrupts, interrupt ISR routine. So which is the interrupt service routine. Like uh, we are adding a ticks, right? Like in the system thing. So it is going to do some operation. So this is how the or IC inside the IC will be. So it is how we will have a controller. We will have an inside the IC. It will all will be inside the same M4 IC. So inside IC so we have an M4 and we will have an NIVC when uh, sorry N9 NVIC, which is an extra vector interrupt controller, and we have an extra external interrupts and interrupt vector type. Okay. So next we will this is the interrupt vector table so we will have an address and we will have an uh, every interrupts number so by configuring this using this number only we will configure those interrupts okay so for that uh, we will see it wait i will show it in this okay so you can uh, go to the reference menu and you will have an uh, interrupts and events so in this so in this you can see this is for the user okay so in this you can see we have an so you can see positions. So the, these are the first column is a position. This is a priority level. Okay. And what is the type of priority? And what is the and and description and the address for those interpandits? Okay. So you can see the first uh, these are in the different color and these are in the different color. So what is this uh, differentiation between color explain is this these are all the things comes under the these all things will come under the internal interrupts. So these all things will be defaultly will be enabled. So by default by microcontroller itself, by at the default or the starting stage itself, it will be it will be enabled. So we don't need to enable it specifically. So we can add the priority itself. Priority alone. Okay. So next is next. These are the things are uh, external interrupts. Okay. These are the external interrupts which will be in default state. It will be in uh, zero. So we have to tune it on. Okay. So we can see you have a lots of interrupts for all the things. Okay. So we have a 88 till 88. Okay. So these are the numbers. So we have to, if I see, you can see. Them. So 81, sorry, 81. So these positions are the numbers. So if I am consider, I am uh, going to use this external interrupt of 50. Then I have to use this uh, position number, which is 40. I have to send to this uh, interrupt uh, register and I have to configure those interrupts. Okay. So this is how we will configure the interrupts. Okay. So that's why the system tick is a default interrupt which will be enabled. So that's why we didn't enable the system tick. We just uh, set the priority. Okay. So till that we will uh, till this we have seen the what is uh, interrupt and what is the interrupt table. So in the next class we will get get into detail. So, so we will see how the stock is working, how the heap is working, 
and how the interrupters are working, how the interrupt service routine is working, how the program main program is get altered. All these things we will see in next session. Okay, guys. So today's session is over. Thank you.